Hey everyone, Nick here. Just another little video on Google. So guys, this is more focused on Google search. So I've covered off a lot on Google Shopping and I do recommend Google Shopping as being the best way to start. But Google search is another really, really great way to test a lot of products really quickly. So this strategy I'm gonna show you has two separate parts to it. Now you can use both one or a mixture, it doesn't really matter. But what I recommend is if you're a beginner to use the first part of this strategy. So the two ways you can use this are test whole collections of products. So say you have a dog store, test a whole selection within that dog store. So if you have something like dog toys, run an ad to all your dog toys and direct people to the collection. Now, the other way you can do that is if you have a specific product that you know has huge search volume, is trending, you're killing it on Facebook or you're seeing it elsewhere and it's doing really well, you can try to do a specific uh, ad for that product. But again, if you don't know it's a winner, there is a little bit of a higher risk there. So the other way where you're promoting a whole collection, you're able to test a lot of products really quite quickly. It's a bit like if you were to test a whole collection of products through a carousel on Facebook ads. So I recommend you stick to the first strategy. Again, if you're at the scaling point with your Facebook ads, you can use the second part of this to scale. Now, the requirements are just like I've covered off in product research. So the products within the collection need to have relatively similar search terms and keywords. Now, obviously if you've got a, a collection of dog toys and they're all completely different, it's probably gonna be a bit harder. But if you have something a bit more specific like dog balls and they're all the same but slightly different, different colors, different variations, that's probably gonna work a lot better. Uh, there's no hard and fast rules here. But what I recommend is that you have relatively similar keywords here. Okay, so from here, the keywords need to have solid search volume. As I've said in my product research videos and in other videos, I recommend you have even higher amount for this because you're obviously testing a wide range of products, especially within the collection portion. So I recommend you have at least 2000 monthly searches or at the very, very bare minimum, 1000. Now, again, ideally you want it to be in an upwards trend on Google Trends or at the very least not at the lowest point. So you need to make sure that this product is something that's in demand. And this is obviously across anything you're testing in e-commerce, whether it be Facebook, Google, etc. So let's get into the setup guide. I'm gonna talk you through this step by step and actually go into Google Ads and the relevant section to show you. Okay, so step one is the keyword research in the Google Keyword Planner. So I'm not sure if you've all used this, but I do recommend you jump in and have a play. So basically, this is what it looks like, guys. So the way to find this is within your ads manager, go into click the little spanner and then select under planning keyword planner. Now from here, you're gonna click find new keywords. So there's a number of different ways you can approach this. You can either just use keywords like, I'll use the example of outdoor hammocks and use that. Or you can do something like put in a URL and then select the page only. If you do the entire site, it's gonna bring lots of stuff from someone like Amazon, but just do this page only. And this is gonna give you some great keywords to get started with. This is only if you're getting stuck and don't have any ideas, but that's a really, really powerful way for you to find keywords. So as you can see here, here's all the different um, keywords that are coming up with hammock. Now, ha something like hammock is probably gonna be a bit too broad. Camping hammock, let's add that. And I will talk a little bit about broad phrase and exact match key terms. So broad match would be something like camping hammock and anything related to camping hammock is gonna come up. So that could be absolutely anything. That could be a specific brand comes up. It could be, it's broad match brings in tons and tons and tons of broad terms. And it's probably not the most effective way for you to start. What I would do is either use broad match modifier, which is where you use the plus sign in front of the words that you're wanting to use. So you could do plus camping plus hammock, and it would bring up things only with those two terms or go phrase match, which is where the, the words go in in quotation marks, phrase match. And that brings in anything that's in 
a similar phrase with camping hammock. So it might be camping hammock Amazon, it would come up. Now, exact match would be if someone just types camping hammock. Now, with that, you're going to have brackets, square brackets around it, and that's going to be the most expensive keyword normally. Now, what I suggest, guys, is sticking to broad match modifier, phrase match, and exact match, and avoiding broad match. I'll go into it in a little bit more detail soon. So, obviously, the so obviously, adding the URL is quite a nice and easy way to get keywords, especially if you're a little bit stuck or don't know what to put in. But even just start off quite broad with something like outdoor hammock, camping hammock, things like that. And just make sure that it's really specific to the products you're selling. Now, it's going to come up with a bunch of different suggestions. And what I suggest you do is you go as specific as possible. The longer tail keywords are going to be the ones that are a little bit cheaper. Okay, so outdoor hanging chair isn't just a hanging chair, it's an outdoor hanging chair. Freestanding hammock isn't just a hammock, it's a freestanding hammock. So the more specific you get on the keywords and aim for the longer tail ones, one, you're going to get the benefit of they're generally cheaper, and two, you're going to get higher quality traffic because it's specific to what the person is searching for. Remember, Google Ads are search volume specific. People are searching for things. Now, if you go too broad, you're going to get a bunch of irrelevant searches. So I always recommend adding things like, and this is why I recommend testing different ad groups, adding things like buy hammock under quilt or where can I buy? Things like that, like things that actually have, that designate that the person is further down the funnel. Now, let's try and find one of those for the purposes of this. Obviously, the keyword search volume is going to be lower. Now, this is an interesting one. Hammock Afterpay. Afterpay is a, pay now, a buy now, pay later service in Australia. And now, that would be a great little keyword to bid on because the person is ready to buy. That's someone that's looking for a hammock, but they're looking to use Afterpay to buy it. These are the sort of keywords you want to search for, guys. So, let's add 10 to 15 uh, for the purposes of this, and we can go from there. So camping hammock, outdoor hammock, if we're selling hammock chairs as well, freestanding, hammock tent. And what you can do with these is you can also add a broad modifier like where to buy hammock tent. Do you kind of get the gist of where, where I'm going with this, guys? It's about being specific and about getting to that buyer intent. Now, let's add some more search terms, hanging chairs for outside, best camping hammock, Outdoor. Now, this is where you might want to put indoor hammock as a negative keyword. Once we're done with this, we're going to add these to the plan. And I would also download them as well so we can paste them in later. But let's head on over to the plan overview. Now, the plan overview is going to give you some rough metrics of what you can expect. Now, these aren't totally accurate, but what I use it for is to work out what should I use as a CPC bid. And what I do is I click on this bit here, but I edit this and I go, okay. And I look at, okay, what should I bid? Now, as you can see here, bidding above say 180 odd, 186, 190, somewhere there, doesn't actually get you any more clicks. You've maxed out your potential. So ideally when you start, I like to go somewhere, say roughly halfway. So you're getting around about half the clicks give or take and then you can kind of go from there because what's going to happen there is you know that you're going to get it you're going to get search volume you're going to get clicks you're bidding and you're getting quite a few clicks now you're not at the top of the page but you're also not spending too much money up here which is what you can do as you get into your scaling and now you can play around with this and as you can see if we increase the bid our average page position improves and then from there what we can do is we can actually add the conversion metrics and really work out, okay, say our landing page converts at 10% and we get $50 on average per sale, this is going to give us an estimate of what we can expect. So our average cost per acquisition is going to be $11 and for $240 spent, we can expect 22 conversions or 1.1K, which is a row as a 4.6. Now, these are just rough guidelines, guys, but use this, play around with it and see where you should set your bid, give or take. Just note that as you move on to get the higher conversions, because these tend to be lower quality on average clicks down here, 
as you try, as you slowly scale, you're going to find that your cost per acquisition or cost per conversion is going to increase. This is the same across all ad platforms. Facebook ads are exactly the same. Okay, so we just completed step three. Use the keyword search and volume forecast tools to get a rough bid and budget estimate. So obviously the, the budget estimate is going to be up to you and I am going to suggest a budget further down here of 10 to $25. Okay, so now let's head on over and create our first campaign with the keywords we've selected. So to create your first campaign, come into campaigns in your Google Ads platform, click the plus symbol and then go new campaign. Select search, and then for your goal, click sales. Click website visits, and enter your website here. Then click continue. Now you're gonna want to only select the search network, so unclick the display network. You can include search partners, it's totally up to you. It's not gonna make a big difference. Uh, select your location of where you're selling. Try to only do one country per campaign. If you want to do multiple, you can try within it, but best practice is to separate that out and do a separate campaign. Select your language, skip this audience part, and then go to budget. As I've said here, select 10 to $25 a day. And the bidding strategy you're going to want for new accounts is either maximize clicks, which is what Google recommends, or manual bid if you're confident with that previous section on how I showed you to select proper bids. That is a bit of an art and a science combined. It, you will get better at that as you progress, but if you're not comfortable with that, just select maximize clicks as that is what Google recommends. Manual bid is just gonna give you a bit more control over what you're bidding, but it is a bit more manual. For older accounts, I'm gonna recommend either eCPC or if you have tons of conversion data, so lots of, lots of sales history, select maximize conversions which is obviously gonna go and find more of those conversion events. Now, if you select maximize clicks down here, so go select a bid strategy directly, maximize clicks, set a maximum CPC amount. If you don't, it's gonna go crazy high and potentially could waste a lot of your money. If you're doing manual CPC, you're gonna select that at the ad group level. For the purpose of this, I'm just gonna leave it at maximize clicks. And as we saw before, I'm gonna put this at 78 cents as that was about halfway and I'm going to work my way up from that if I need to. Now, ad extensions, you can go through these and add them if you like. They're the little parts down the bottom of ads. You can select them at a uh, site level so you could do things like free shipping, um, fast order processing, things like that and you can have them on all your ads. Then, But we, for the purpose of this, let's just go on to the next section. Now your ad group. If you want to get started quickly, as I say in step six, you can just do one ad group and lump all those keywords that we searched in just, into just one ad group. That's not best practice. Best bet is to do a couple, two or more ad groups and put in the like words together and split test them and see which ones are working the best. So you can add five to 10 similar keywords. Uh, you could do something like just broad match, just phrase match or just exact match. Or you could try different variations of the word that are, that are alike or similar. So from here, you can either create the campaign straight from here, but for this, let's just download the keywords into a CSV file. So we currently have these keywords here in broad match. If you want to wrap them, uh, you can use a website like AdWords Wrapper and you can paste them in here and go wrap keywords. Now this is gonna give you all the different variations as we said. And you can just go through and select the ones you want to test. As I said, I would recommend sticking to phrase and exact match or broad modified keywords. I wouldn't just stick to broad. So a broad modified is this one here, plus two, plus person, plus hammock. This is the broad, this is the broad modifier, this is the phrase, and this is the exact. So stick to these here. And obviously, the more specific you get, the more likely it is you're going to get qualified traffic and conversions, but your cost per click will be more expensive because obviously people bid up those words because they're more likely to lead to sales. So for the purpose of this, let's just grab these ones here, the modified, broad, phrase, and exact. So click copy, come over here, and paste it in. So all those keywords are going to be there. Now, if you wanted to create another ad group, you can do that here but let's just move on to the next step 
you're totally fine to do that for yourself if you like. So go save and continue. The next step is where we're gonna actually create our ad. So that's what customers will see when they search within Google. So I recommend testing at least three variations and you can use something like this ad here. So for the hammocks, we can do something like best outdoor hammock store online, huge, huge range of quality hammocks up to 60% off today only. Just an example. In the section underneath in the description, shop for hammocks, free shipping and 60% off, top quality, great selection and expert advice you can trust, 100% satisfaction. Now, what you put in here is gonna depend totally up to whatever niche or product you're selling. And I do recommend trying a few different ad variations, as I said, and then just testing and seeing which one works the best. Then you can switch off the other ones and just run the, the ad that works the best. So if we grab this, so this doesn't quite fit. So you've only got 30 characters, so it does have to be quite short. So you could do best outdoor hammocks online, huge range of quality hammocks, up to 60% off today only. Now, what sometimes happens is this this headline three sometimes gets cut off, so potentially you wanna put that up here. Make sure you have your final URL, and that's just gonna be the collection. So make sure that goes to the collection for something like this within your store. The example path is the what's gonna turn up here, and that's not necessarily what the URL is gonna be. So if you are you have a really ugly URL or something you haven't changed, you can actually just do outdoor hammocks. And that's what's gonna pop up here. It's gonna have your store name.com outdoor hammocks. Paste in your description. So here you can just talk up your product. So go and have a look at what competitors are doing and add it in and make the most of the characters you have there and use them all. So just make the most of the descriptions here. Don't add irrelevant things, but make sure that the keywords are mentioned and whatever other features, benefits, or things people look for within this. So whether it's high quality, um, whether it's price-driven, free shipping, anything that's gonna get them to click through to your ad, have a look at what other people are doing, and then try and do something that stands out. So just make sure you have the final URL in here. I've just selected an example from another store, so it would take them to the collection page of the store. Click Save and Continue. Just double check over everything, and your campaign is set up and ready to go. Once that's all done, just click Continue to Campaign. Now you're good to go. So from here, let it run for four to seven days before making any changes. That's just to let the algorithm do its thing and collect some data. You don't wanna go in too early and start meddling with it. But if you do go in early and start seeing certain keywords that are getting all the clicks and they're completely irrelevant, add them to negative keywords. So from here, every second day after that initial period, you're gonna to want to go in and optimize by removing unprofitable keywords. And then if you're seeing have a look at your data, have a look at Google Analytics and have a look at, got a high bounce rate, What's what products people are adding to cart, if any, what people are purchasing and just have a look and see if you can optimize it. So what I mean by optimizing, so from here, it's just gonna be a continuous process of refinement, adding, removing keywords, testing different ads. If, you're, if your ads don't have a high click-through rate, then potentially you wanna test a few more. But what you're gonna eventually do is switch off the two, if you're doing three ads, switch off the two worst performing ads and just let that one ad that's getting the highest click-through rate or lowest bounce rate, and just use that. This is, you've got to use your Google Analytics in, in uh, conjunction with your AdWords account here. So moving to step 10, if you do see something that's doing really well, or if the whole campaign is doing well, start scaling by increasing your budget by 20% every second day or every other day. I suggest 20% every other day. And then if you've got a specific product that's doing well, create a product specific ad for it and use the keywords that are doing well and use the bids that you're seeing uh, within that. From there, you can also try different bidding strategies. So that's really covered Google search ads, guys. I hope you found some real use for this. It's something I'm not seeing a lot of people cover off and it's another way you can drive high quality traffic to your store or you can use this as a method for scaling. Now, as I said, there's two different ways to do this. Everything I just did, if you're doing it with specific products, gets tailored to that product. So, so let me know what you think about this, guys. I hope you find some real use in it, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.